In this video, we're going to focus on the slope formula and also how to calculate the slope given two points. So let's say we have a linear equation and on this line we have two points of interest. We'll call this P1 and P2 and we want to calculate the slope using those two points. This portion here is the run. This part of the triangle is the rise. The slope represented by the symbol M is equal to the rise divided by the run. The rise between those two points is the change in Y. It's the difference in the Y values. The run is the change in X. So the slope is equal to the change in Y divided by the change in X. Now let's say P1 has the coordinates x1, y1, and point 2 has the coordinates x2, y2. The change in y becomes the difference between the y values of those two points. So delta y is y2 minus y1. Delta x, the change in x, which is the run, is the difference between these two x values. So it's x2 minus x1. And that's how you could derive the slope formula. So we could use that formula to calculate the slope of any line as long as we know two points that are on that line. So here's an example. Let's say we have two points. The first one is going to be 2 comma 5 and the second one is going to be 4 comma negative 7. What is the slope of the line that contains those two points? Feel free to pause the video and use that formula to get the answer. We're going to call this x1, y1. This is going to be x2 and y2. So the slope is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 y2 is negative 7, y1 is simply 5, x2 is 4, x1 is 2. Negative 7 minus 5 is equal to negative 12. 4 minus 2 is 2, and negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. So that is the slope of the line that passes through those two points. Let's try another example. For the sake of practice, go ahead and try this one. Feel free to pause the video and calculate the slope of the line that passes through those two points. So let's call this x1, y1, and this is going to be x2, y2. First, let's write the formula. And then we'll plug in. So y2 is negative 5 minus y1, which is positive 3. x2 is 2 minus x1, which is negative 4. Negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. 2 minus negative 4, whenever you see two negative signs next to each other, they cancel and become positive. 2 plus 4 is 6. So what we have here is an improper fraction. Let's see if we can reduce it. 8 is 4 times 2. 6 is 3 times 2. So we could cancel a 2 and we'll be left with negative 4 over 3. So that is the slope of the line that passes through those two points. Whenever you have a positive slope, the line is increasing. It's going up. When you have a negative slope, it's going down. For a horizontal line, the slope is 0. And for a vertical line, the slope is undefined. Whenever you have a zero in the denominator of a fraction, it's that value, the value of that fraction will be undefined. Now let's work on one more example, but this time we're going to have fractions.
go ahead and calculate the slope of the line that passes through those two points using the same formula. Now the process is the same, but there's going to be more algebra involved in this particular example. So y2 is 3 over 7, y1 is 4, x2 is 5, x1 is 2 over 3. Now, how would you simplify this complex fraction? What would you do in this situation? What I recommend doing is trying to get rid of the smaller fractions within the larger fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by a multiple of these two denominators, or you could say by the common denominator. 7 times 3 is 21, so the common denominator for those two smaller fractions is going to be 21. Now, what is 21 times 3 over 7? 3 over 7 times 21, you can write it as 21 over 1. See it this way. 21 is 7 times 3. You could cancel a 7, and you'll be left with 3 times 3, which is 9. So 3 over 7 times 21 is simply 9. Now, 21 times 4. 20 times 4 is 80. 1 times 4 is 4. Add the 2, you get 84. But we do have a negative sign in front of it. Now, 21 times 5. 20 times 5 is 100. 1 times 5 is 5, so this is going to add up to being 105. And then finally, we have 21 times 2 over 3. What you could do is 21 divided by 3, which is 7, times 2, that'll give you 14. So that's what we now have. By the way, if you want more example problems on slope, linear equations, linear functions, how to graph linear equations, things like that, check out the links in the description section below. I'll be posting more videos in this topic. Also, for those of you who are studying for your algebra final exam, I'll be posting a link in the description uh, for that as well. You can also look up the video on YouTube. If you go to the YouTube search bar and type in algebra final exam, organic chemistry tutor, it's going to come up. 9 minus 81, that's negative 72. 105 minus 14, that is... So 105 minus 10 is 95 minus 4. That's going to be 91. Now, it doesn't look like we could simplify this fraction. But let's see if we could. 91 is 13 times 7. 72 is 8 times 9. So there's nothing really that we can cancel. So we're going to leave our answer like this. Negative 72 over 91. So that's basically it for this video. Now you know how to derive the slope formula, and you also know how to use it to calculate the slope of the line that passes through two points.